Hebrews 4 and 12, our Old Testament witness, as we're talking about the prophetic. Um, I've only given you one sheet. You should have the other sheets. I just want to deal with the last part of his pedagogy today. Um, what's under the influence. Um, so this week we're going to cover people under the influence of the prophetic. But let me remind you of our word. Let's look at Proverbs 18 and then Hebrews 4. Again, to for newcomers, just a brief word of introduction and grounding and foundation for our teaching this morning. Proverbs 18, 20, 21 first, 20, 21. Then we'll go to Hebrews 4. I want to remind you, it's my belief that there's a book in everyone. I know Elder Butler believed there's a song in everyone. You should write a song. Watch this. Just like I, he believes you should write a song, I believe you should write a book. I believe everybody has at least one book in them. Amen? Um, at least one song in one book. All you need is a one-hit wonder. Come here, Van Millie Vanilli. Y'all are quiet. You just need one. Lord, I feel something. From the fruit of his mouth, a man is, man's stomach is filled. Not his hands, but the fruit of his mouth. With the harvest from his lips, he is satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. Uh, don't have time to go back over that real quick. Hebrews 4 and 12. This is what we need to understand when we talk about the prophetic. We're talking about not, again, the, the kind of wooey, creepy, you know, tell you about your future and all of that. All that is part of foretelling. This, we're talking about foretelling, being able to speak God's word into your situation and understand with clarity as you exegete not only your, the Bible, but as you exegete the culture in which you live, and you exegete your circumstance. You're able to speak right the word. Are you understanding me? That you, you must exegete the word in context. In preach, we call it the sits in Laban. We, we look at it, what does it say to that audience? And so you need to say for, your, for today, when I read the Bible, when I read the word, it needs to speak prophetically to my audience, to me, where I am right now. And then how do I exegete the word, what he says? How do I apply it? How is it made applicable to where I am? Are you hearing me? And we understand this text, for the word of God is living and active. In other words, that the word should work in your life. Gone are the days when we just come here sermons. You need to put the word into practice. And that's why some of you are challenged, because it is your life requires the word. Are you hearing me? The life is required, and that's why the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required, because the word goes from in this house. And watch this. You will be tested on the word that you hear. Yes. It's for your growth. It's for your, your maturation. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Just like when you go to class, when you go to school, they test you over the material. And if you don't pay attention, uh-oh. Still don't keep the test from coming. Still don't keep the semester test or the semester exam from coming. If you don't prepare, are you hearing me? Study the show. The word is coming forth in this house. You need to study it. Yes. Exegete it for your circumstance and your situation. So when the test comes, you will be proved. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. For the word of God is living and active. Listen, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. This is how strong the word is, how powerful it is. Watch this. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit. It's able to divide the invisible. It's able to separate it. It's able to judge. able to give you wisdom and insight on that which you cannot see. Are you hearing me? Come on, are you? There's a lot of things you cannot see and do not understand. But when you begin to declare the word and speak the word, it's able to reveal things to you. Are you hearing me? When you speak the word into a situation that you do not understand, the Holy Spirit is able to reveal what is going on. But you've got to know the word and speak the word to be able to see what it's saying. Stop complaining about your situation. Speak the word in your situation. He will separate. He will divide. Are you hearing me? 
joints and marrow. Lord, help. The word will work in your body. It works for the body in situations. Are oh, you hearing me? It, not only will it help your spirit, man, it will help your physical man. Begin to speak to stress. Begin to speak to diabetes and eat right and exercise, but speak to your body. I told you last week there are voices in your head. Speak back to them. Y'all are quiet. Some of you don't admit it. There's voices speaking to you. That's why you do some of the things you do. Yeah, something spoke to you and it made you convince you that was a good thing to do. Y'all are quiet. Speak back. It judges. Here's a good point. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the hearts. When, the word, when we lie to ourselves, when we speak the word prophetically, it'll get us right. Y'all are quiet. You don't even have to say amen. Sometimes we will lie to ourselves and justify. And the word will remind you, no, Patrick, that's crazy. Sit down. Let me run this morning. And so I don't have time to go back over everything. That's just a quick um, opening. And so we said um, that the word is um, what's under the influence of the word. We talked about mountains. We talked about dry bones. Don't forget, if you have questions, you can text them at 682-323-1110, my number. Um, it speaks to barrenness. What were the mountains that we speak to? What does it have to deal with? Things that are insurmountable, right? But sometimes the things that we have to get over is not the devil, it's who? It's us because of what? The lack of what? Unforgiveness. Boy, y'all quick to forget. That's why I gave you notes and you still ain't studied. That's why Moses, that's why, uh, what was that boy? <laughs> Noah preached the same sermon. 40 years, it's going to rain. They still couldn't remember the text. <laughs> right? So the mountain in our lives, things that are some seemingly insurmountable, is not the devil most of the time. The big things in our life are because of what? Our inability to forgive. Yeah. Right? And so we talked about the context of speaking to mountains. It's not just name it, claim it. It's about dealing with things that are insurmountable. And sometimes the biggest hurdles in our lives is because we have not forgiven someone. So speaking to the mountains, speaking words of forgiveness and releasing people from us. Then we talked about dry bones. What is the result of dry bones? Does everybody have dryness? Why, do, why does dryness come? Because of what? Disobedience will cause dryness in our lives. Right? And God always judges disobedience. Right? He convicts us. Amen? And then we talked about barrenness. Right? In Genesis. When we need the creative power of God. When there we have uh, what some writers call the deuce absconditus, the dark night of the soul. We don't know what's going on, Lord. We have nights and seasons of seemingly hopelessness. We have the power to speak creatively. But we must speak the will of God, not what we want. Are you hearing me? And then what about um, speaking when um, Joshua spoke for the son of Stan? So is that because we just want to speak to the son? What was the context of that? Strategy for what? Warfare. So if you're not fighting, don't speak to the son. If you're not engaged in spiritual warfare, you don't need to speak to the son. Right? And we talked about Gibeon, right? It was over Gibeon. Gibeon speaks of what? When we talk, Gibeon represents... Lineage, right? Where you come from. Sometimes the things we dealt with that your dad dealt with, right? And so when we talk about spiritual warfare, it goes back to sometimes family things, family issues, our family of origin, depression in our lineage, right? Alcoholism in our lineage. And you got to speak to it. Call it for what it is. Stop hiding. Right? Ooh, y'all forgetful. Are we, is it coming back? And then what? You, the, um, what's under the power of the prophetic physical disease? You can speak to disease. When we say one thing we need to be cautious of, there's balance in the bite of Christ, amen, right? Because what, what happened? What is for the believer? Healing where? Always. On what side? Where is healing guaranteed? When we get our new bodies, for sure. Is, is healing always manifesting on this side? Always. 
It's not. We talked about spiritual gift, the spiritual gift of healing, right? And so we can't put ourselves in a box and say, I don't have enough faith if I'm not healed physically. That's a whole nother camp. We're not a part of that camp. Amen. And so we said that healing was a sign that the kingdom has come. Signs and wonders for unbelievers. Right? I don't need to be healed to be convinced that God loves me if I'm born again. Right? I gave some examples of people who live with sickness. Amen? Doesn't mean they were not healed. They live with some symptoms. But watch this. Grace is sufficient. Are oh, you hearing me? So you can't beat yourself up. You can't conclude, I don't have enough faith if I don't see healing on this side. And then also, God heals in many ways. Yes? We talked about that, so I don't have time to go back over each of these in depth. And then demonic oppression. We ought to know that the prophetic, that demonic oppression is subject to the prophetic. Amen? And so demon conf the, um, Christ confronts the demon. Does he, does he talk to him and plead with him? And say, pretty, please leave him alone. He said what? Be quiet. Right? Sometimes we listen to oppositional spirits too long. And that's why we fall prey and fall victim to their influence because we sit and listen to them. Jesus said, be quiet. Prophetic gives you the power to silence voices that are contrary to the will and word of God. Oh, you hear me? That's why some things you just do not need to listen to. Some crowds you do not need to hang around. But if you don't have the mental fortitude to stand against it, don't listen to it. You all are quiet. And last but not least, um, people are under the influence of the prophetic. And so I want to look at, um, so the last tenet of under the prophetic influence is people. Right? And so, number one, I want to look at God and Adam in Genesis 3. And so, I want to talk, just kind of talk to you a discourse on um, how the prophetic influences people that we are called to people. We talked about that in discipleship this morning. So, number one, we look at just, just think in your mind, go back to Genesis chapter 3 when God creates Adam and he begins to give Adam empowerment and tells him to be fruitful and multiply, have dominion over the earth, right? That is a prophetic utterance. He says, have dominion over the earth. So number one, when we talk about under the influence, people are under the influence of the prophetic for empowerment for purpose, number one, empowerment for purpose. The prophetic empowers you for purpose. So the prophetic empowerment is a kingdom consequence before it is an ecclesiastical spiritual gift. So we hear and see spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians. Yes? yes. Romans 12. But we see prophetic gifting, prophetic and the power of the prophetic as God gives Adam, a decree and says, be fruitful and multiply, have dominion. He empowers him for service. And so when we understand that, that before the church was the kingdom in Genesis and that God spoke everything into existence prophetically by declaring his truth and declaring what he desired, we must then understand that that is how my life is empowered for purpose, by declaring God's truth. So, what does that mean? So it means, number one, as I talked about in discipleship this morning, that the power of the prophetic does not come by you coming falling out on the altar. The power of the prophetic does not come from an esoteric experience. It comes from a relationship with God. Are you hearing me? In other words, I don't want you all to have this foggy notion that only a limited amount of people have the power to walk in the prophetic. All right. All right. That from the beginning of time in Genesis that God ordained for mankind out of relationship with him to walk prophetically empowered for purpose. Yes. 
And so I'm suggesting this morning when we properly exegete scripture and see the law first mentioned, that Adam walks in purpose out of relationship with God and he walks under the prophetic word to be fruitful and to multiply and to have dominion. That is the word that guarded and guided his life. You need to hear that this morning. So stop looking for someone to lay hands on you. Stop looking for you to have this only limited experience only a few people have. No, no. When I wake up in the morning and talk to God, he's going to empower me for living today. Every day that I wake up and I talk to God, okay, I forgot to pray this morning. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let me get back in step with God. Lord, I, I got up. I was running in a hurry. But, Lord, I love you. I'm with you. Lord, speak to me. Order my steps. Direct my path. I need your powerful purpose. And I need your power for living today. I need your power to make right decisions today. And just emit at, the, at that moment you open your mouth, you can be under the influence of the prophetic anointing of God. That you're in right relationship with him because you're talking with him. And the Bible says that God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. If you walk with him, you'll walk with him. Are you hearing me? I think for so long we made it so hard to walk and live holy. <laughs> Y'all are quiet. So the prophetic is steeped in wisdom which flows from a relationship with God, like I said, rather than, than a, an esoteric experience. In other words, a limited experience. So number one, empowerment for service. People are under the influence of the prophetic for empowerment for purpose. Number two, the woman at the well, John 4. People are under the power of the prophetic to reveal proper perspective. Proper perspective. John 4. We know the story, right? Very familiar pericope. Jesus meets a woman at the well, and what happens? What does she ask for? She asks for water, right? And Jesus, what does Jesus say? If you know who you were talking to, what would happen? You'd ask for a different type of water. And I would give you what? Living water. Right? And then she goes on, she starts talking religious. Right? She starts talking about, well, I don't know what she's talking about water. But um, the Jews worship on the mountain. And Samaritans worship. <laughs> so she got real religious. She had a religious perspective. First of all, when you understand the power of the prophetic, you meet people where they are. Because of dunamis has the power to get them where they're destined to be. One of the reasons, one of the things that trips the church up is religion. And can I suggest that it's, it's not necessarily your responsibility to get everybody to believe what I praise to believe? It's maybe not your responsibility to get everybody to believe, uh, you know, the missionary Baptist faith and doctrine or the Pentecostal, Pentecostal symbols of the world. <laughs> maybe that's not your assignment. Maybe it's just to change their perspective of who God is. And maybe you've been using the wrong thing to persuade them. So what does Jesus do? He starts talking about what? Water. Why? Because she's at a well. <laughs> Isn't that a teaching lesson? You're trying to win people, and you're talking about something that they have no clue of what you're talking about. So how can you convince them otherwise? If you're at a well, talk to them about water. Ooh, the devil mad he didn't get these notes to you. I'm going to get them to you, though. <laughs> these good notes. The prophetic, listen, always confronts limited perspectives and uses well experiences to usher those who are marginal in faith and religion to active faith. So when I walk in the prophetic, and God gives me a well encounter, I'm not supposed to convince them of church doctrine. 
I'm supposed to convince them of God. And so what does Jesus do? The prophetic gives him insight into her life. Right? He doesn't put her on blast to embarrass her. Uh Uh-oh. He doesn't begin to talk to her about her relationships with men to embarrass her. He gives her this prophetic insight to let her know he's not ordinary. And he's not after what other men are after. Uh Uh-oh. There goes a power of motive. So watch this. I can't change people's perspective until they know my true motive. When she finds out the man at the well is not what other men are after, now I can hear what he's trying. But the only reason I want you to come to my church is to get an offering. I just want to talk to you so you can help my small group to grow. (laughs) Y'all are quiet. The prophetic insight. So God will give you prophetic insight into people's lives for well experiences. But you've got to check your motives. Because if your motives are not right, you will not be able to change their perspective. That's why I counsel people. You don't have to be a part of this church for me to counsel or for us to reach out to you. We have some folk coming to dinner tonight. They haven't officially joined. Because we are family. We, we say it. This is what we say every Sunday. If you've been here longer than five minutes, you're a family. So if you're a family, why do you have to join for us to invite you somewhere? If you're family, why do you have to join for us to be extra nice to you? Yeah. Y'all are real quiet now, but I'm trying to help you live practically. So you can't say one thing and do something else. Uh-oh. Let me move on. Y'all getting quiet and you know how I feel about quiet church. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> Apostolic faith, point number three, always... Always, always is apostolic. When God begins to use you to walk in the prophetic and have well experiences, it's not necessary for them to join your church. The Bible says she went and she told all the men, y'all are quiet. I wish I had some help now. We have babies up in here, so I can't tell it like I feel like telling it. But she went and told all the men that she knew. And she knew some men. She said, come see a man. Isn't it strange? The woman who knew men said, hold up, come see a man. The prophetic, when we have well experiences, and you should have well experiences on your job, in the marketplace, at the gym, if you're looking for them. If you're walking prophetically, y'all are quiet. And the consequence is, she goes and gets an entire city. She wins a city. Church growth is easy. Well, uh, God told me, stop reading church growth books. And I'm a church planner. He said, stop reading books. Read the book. Stop. You've been seminary trained. Stop going to seminars and conferences. They good. They good. Y'all know I go, but I don't what? I don't go, go. I don't go, 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 go. Y'all missed it. Woo, y'all slow. Y'all are slow. Y'all are slow. So, (sighs) let me move on. Somebody say win the city. The prophetic does not reveal truth of circumstance to demean or diminish, rather to prompt and promote individual purpose and kingdom advancement. So the prophetic is not intended to embarrass people. (laughs) God does not have to embarrass people to get them to change. (laughs) Neither do you. Uh Uh-oh. That's not God's purpose, y'all. Not to broadcast folks' business and put them on blast and embarrass and tell them they're doing this and doing that and and the Spirit of the Lord told me and you need to do it. To 
the prophetic is redemptive. He reveals to her who he is by telling her about herself. The consequence is she's transformed and she wins a city. Wow. What would happen if each of us had a well, just one well encounter before we died? Not many, just, just one well, just one person. Watch this. How many people have we passed up that could have been a well experience? How many people have we discounted because of who they are and what they've done? Well, they couldn't bless our church because of where they've been. Oh, she a prostitute. She, what if Jesus would have said that? And done the math, but at least on that day, she won more folk to Jesus than the disciples. The folk with the license to preach, the folk who had been sitting at his feet learning how to preach, she she ain't been in one seminary class, but she won a whole city. And y'all still want still waiting on a certificate, waiting on somebody to lay hands. Just 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 have an experience with him, have an encounter with God and walking the prophetic. And you that that's your that's your certification right there. That's your ordination. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Uh, I got two minutes on that time. We got a dinner today, so I gotta I gotta be right. I gotta do right. The next one was Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. First Kings seventeen, seven through sixteen. So the first we talk about the power of the prophetic, people are under the people are under the power of the prophetic is for what? Adam with God and Adam in Genesis was for empowerment for what? Purpose. Number two, we just talked about the woman at the well to reveal what? Proper perspective. And number three, I'm talking about the widow of Zarephath, 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. And I'm going to suggest it's for the release of prosperity. So the prophetic is fueled by environments that require faith over facts, obedience above acquiescence, and sacrifice instead of selfishness. So what happens with the widow Zarephath in this text? The prophet comes and says, give me a piece of cornbread, if I could use my vernacular. <laughs> and she was like, uh... Um, I know you're a prophet. Well, check it out. I was about to fix the last cornbread muffin for me and the little junior. And this is what she says. She says, we're going to eat it and die. Because in her mind, the end of the meal represented the end of life. This is when the prophetic is profoundly needed in people's lives. When they become hopeless because of their situation. When what, when, when where I am I know will be the end of me. I can't see me beyond this. I can't see marriage getting better after this. I can't see my money getting better after this. I can't see my life getting better after this has happened. That's when the power of the prophetic is needed. Yes, yes. And it's this time where God will bring someone into your life or he will send you into someone else's life and give them a word to say, if you sacrifice instead of being selfish, if you obey instead of acquiescing, the word of obedience can change your life. So she sa he says what? Bake me a cake. 
give me a corn fritter. Yeah. Hey, sounds good about now. She obeys a man of God. She does what he asks. She concludes. The text is hidden in the text. She concludes in her mind because she realized he's a man of God. The same mindset Abraham said concluded with. You remember Abraham? Abraham concludes, okay, God, you require my son. So if I give him to you, you have to raise him up because he's a part of the promise. That's hidden in the Hebrew text. Not hidden in the trans. Now you can't find it in the translation. You gotta find it in the hidden text. So she has the same mindset. He's a prophet, so he's spoken. So if I feed him, I have to live. There's no way I can feed the prophet and die. Why? Because here's the word. He gives every man the measure of faith. Oh, God. See, there's faith in you. You don't even know that you have. But watch this. You're waiting on a prophetic moment to move you from time to eternity. God, that's good. And so many times we get distressed, we get frustrated without realizing that the dire situation we're in is the very moment that we need to transform our very lives. And if we will respond to the faith that is in us, watch it, the faith that is already in us, I'll say it again, the faith that is already in us, you don't need to go find more faith, the faith that is in you right now. Just step out and hear the word, and when you respond appropriately to the word, Bake the cake, baby. The Bible then says that her cupboard never ran out of oil. Didn't say never ran out of bread. It says it ran out of oil. Didn't mention flour. It mentioned oil. So he gives you what you need, not what you see. Because some of you are looking at the flour and you're looking at the batter, but you realize he said you, that's not what you need. He said you need oil because if you don't have oil, you can't do nothing with that. Won't he give you oil? He'll give you oil, but you've got to respond appropriately. And that's where your prosperity, I'm not talking about in money. I'm talking about the abundance of what you need. That's prosperity. Because there are some people with money that's impoverished, poor in spirit. You need, you need an abundance of what you need. Oil. And last but not least, I got to get this out because there's three more messages I need to preach next Sunday. And the last one... Um, What's the first one under the prophetic influence? Empowerment for purpose was number two. Proper perspective was number three. And number four is David and Nathan, 2 Samuel 12, prompting of private to public. The prophetic always begins private tugs at transformation via truth before going public. <laughs> uh, in business, you may know and probably know um, that when, when companies, what they call going, issuing an IPO, when they go public, it costs, number one, it costs a lot of money, but they're able then to have stocks, so on and so forth, and you know, pay dividends, but it takes a lot of money for a business to do that. In other words, it's costly to go public. I'll say it again. It's costly to go public. David is confronted by Nathan the prophet. You know the story of Bathsheba? He sees that fine thing on the roof bathing. Shouldn't have been looking. But what happens is that the look turned into something more than a look. The look turned into lust. And then the lust turned into a relationship. And then the relationship caused a murderous act. Then it caused a cover-up. And then it caused more lies. It probably would have been okay, 
but David was king. God probably would have let him slide if he wasn't the king. Y'all are, are quiet. He probably, I'm not saying he would have let him get away with it. He probably would have let him slide publicly if he wasn't king. The prophetic comes after there had been private attempts of transformation. Patrick, stop. Patrick, I love you. Patrick, I have more for you. Patrick, you're a new creature. Oh, Patrick, I love you, son. Patrick, my grace is sufficient. Patrick, man, is you can live above this. There's always a way of escape. Patrick, don't lie about it. Patrick, don't cover it up. Patrick, stop doing extra to it. <laughs> Patrick, don't lie publicly. Keep the lie private. Patrick, don't destroy someone else's life. Patrick, uh-oh. Watch this. Don't abuse my power. Patrick, when it was between you and Bathsheba, I was dealing with you privately. Patrick, you're king. Now you've control of an army and you cause the army to get someone else killed. Now you step beyond a relationship and adultery. Now you're abusing the power as king. Now I got to deal with you publicly. I'm trying to help you. The only time the prophetic becomes public is when there's an abuse of power. When leaders start abusing power, it becomes public. And watch this. It's just not spiritual. Look at Congress. Look at politics. When you start tearing up people with power, using power the wrong way, darkness comes to light. And it's not that God smiles on anything lesser. But there comes a point where he says, I cannot, watch this, I cannot allow the masses to model what you're doing, so I've got to expose it prophetically and reveal truth. And so now, watch this, instead of you being the example, you become the model. Yeah, there's a difference. Y'all, listen, listen to the nuance. Instead of being an example of how to, you become the model. I'll say it again because some of y'all need to get this. Instead of being the example of leadership, you become the model of. That's just how he talks to Patrick. I'm through. Y'all been real quiet again today. Uh, we had a visitor. We had visitors and guests, so I did not just stop and walk out like I was tempted. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all just figure it out, the rest of it on your own. I'm just playing. I did not get any texts, any questions. I'll, we got to get our dinner to our luncheon. Questions? Questions for you then. Number one, what's under the, first of all, the last category we talked about, what's under the influence of the prophetic? People, right? And the first example was what? Empowerment for purpose. What's the scripture reference? Genesis, God and Adam. Number two, proper perspective. So God can change your perspective, right? From move from religion to being relevant, right? From religion to relevance. Who's the, with the biblical reference? 
Roman at the well, John 4. Number three. Release of prosperity. Who's, what's our biblical reference? Kings. Um, Elijah and the, and the widow of Zarephath. And then number four. Promoting from private to public. Right? Who's David and Nathan? We're not getting to there, right? We don't have, that's just for our knowing, not for not where we are, right? Because we're going to listen privately to the Holy Ghost. Amen? Does that make sense? Do all these make sense? I want to make the prophetic applicable to our lives. Not something just kind of, you know, and I get it. I've been in that camp. I went to a charismatic seminary. <laughs> I've seen a whole lot of stuff. But God gives us balance. Oh, you hearing me? Had no questions? Going once? Going twice? All right. The whole much is given, much is required. You can't say I never told you. Amen. We're standing. Hey, this is Pastor Patrick McGrew. Thank you so much for watching the Higher Praise Family Church YouTube channel. If you have not already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If the messages have been a blessing to you, hey, please share with your family, your friends, co-workers, your neighbors, and allow them also to get connected to what's going on at Higher Praise Family Church. Also, you can download our app, Higher Praise app, to see what's going on and stay connected. Again, thank you again for watching. God bless. Hope to see you soon.